Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to shows every Thursday at 8.01 p.m. and full shows online at WCBE.org. I'm Johnny DiLoretto. I'm John DeSando. This is Cinema Classics. Boy, is it ever. We're talking about environmental collapse <laughs> in movies. And I gotta tell you, uh, I'm, it feels like in, the environment has collapsed in this room because I'm freezing. I know! <laughs> But you can't be as as creatively stimulated oh if it's God. warm. Now this is I'm inspired by Kara Buckley's article and from the New York Times okay. last week. All right, and uh, and she talks about climate doom. Climate doom right. as a plot device. Uh, as, as well, not that's a good question. It's not necessarily it, but it turns out to be much more featured than I thought after reading her article. Uh, and she's picking on. <clears throat> Superhero films and sci-fi's, okay, as as using these as background and or plot device uh, for her her uh, for Doom, okay. So uh, so she says critics say villains and dystopians. Uh, <clears throat> one of the comments she makes, and it's the other side of this uh, of this argument, she says critics say villains and dystopias obscure. Crisis alleviating actions. So here you have, and we'll we'll go through the half a dozen or so yeah. of them, and we'll find out that climate doom is behind all of them. Okay. But her point, which I really like, it is the kind of point you would make, and you're good at, is what about things getting better? Right. Well, here's my first question: <laughs> Is how often does climate doom play a specific role in these movies? And how often is it just, are we looking at a post -apo a vague post-apocalyptic well, scenario? All right, let's look at it. All right. Let's go back me. to Avengers, the most recent Avengers. Yeah, Endgame. Yeah. And Thanos <laughs> doing his Malthusian, I don't know how you'd call it, bit. Yeah. Uh, says that it's, it's uh, uh, there's going to be an environmental, there is an environmental collapse, and doesn't he wipe out half the human race? Yeah, he just basically makes this point that, uh, yeah, the resources in the universe are, are depleted, yeah. which actually echoes back to the Matrix, the original Matrix, which is what Agent Smith tells Neo, or no, he tells Morpheus, he says that, you know, you humans are disgusting. You go into one place and you're just like cockroach, you just deplete the resources. <laughs> Great, very good and example. That, and you needed to be stopped. <laughs> All right, well, Aquaman. All right. Aquaman. <laughs> okay. <Got it. laughs> and the king under underwater, the king, yeah, decides that he needs to make a war on humans because they're polluting the whole. Thing. Right. That would that should be the plot of the next Aquaman is they try to he tries to get rid of all the plastic in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, boy. You know, you, Aquaman gets trapped in a bunch of plastic bags. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that's pollution. Okay. And I, you can see it. He's down underneath there. He says, right. "What's going on up there?" He says, "All right, let's do." What away about with uh, Mad Max Fury Road? Is All it right. on that list? Is it? It isn't. It is not. No, it is. It okay. is um, a kind of agrarian dystopia. I mean, isn't that a whole bunch of drought? I, I, you know what? I don't. That's the thing. I I don't know. If, man, I would have to go back through all those movies and and uh, you know and listen closely to what how they explain that away. But that one seems post-apocalyptic and not necessarily For sure. environmental. Exactly. Although how you got to that, what is the apocalypse? Right. But uh, yeah. Exactly. It could be linked to this, right? Excellent. Yes, right. So I kind of had that down here That's because of interesting. Of wow. The apocalypse as environmental collapse. That's a great... Yeah. Uh, maybe is where we're headed. We always thought it was going to be nuclear weapons, but... Right, right, right. right exactly. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now, a favorite of yours and mine, yeah. Snowpiercer. Yeah, Snowpiercer. Oh, 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 Very good movie. Oh, oh, oh. There, there was a... Bong Joon-ho, is that how you say it? <laughs> good one. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Are you kidding me? You're asking me. Uh, but what I what I love about Snowpiercer is, <laughs> is that they, they've had, it's a, there's a failed climate change experiment mm -hmm. in which all humanity, except for the lucky riders on this train, yeah. is gone. Right. So I mean, here you. So yeah, the 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 remnants of humanity are just going around and around the globe, on this train. Right? Yes. That's powered by some kind of, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, it is a really good movie. I got to tell you something about this movie. 
and I, I want you to go look this up afterwards. All Don't right. forget to do it, and, and all the listeners should all right. check this out. Just go to YouTube and you search Snowpiercer Willy Wonka. Oh. And there are a handful of videos out there that will walk you through this theory that Snowpiercer is actually a sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> So he's <laughs> Willy Wonka's in the back of the train. No, it's not. <laughs> oh. You gotta just oh, okay. watch all the right, video. All right. It it seems absurd, but there's an <laughs> argument, a sound argument does ultimately mount. For that. Well, this is such a rich film. There's also a strong commentary on the class system. Yeah. You know, here we have a kind of a new world on the train, but it still devolves into mm -hmm. the haves and the haves nots. Right. Yeah, and they're <laughs> eating people. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it. Now. Um, I'm not going to uh, broach... Isn't that the one where Chris Evans says, I know what baby tastes like? No, I did he really. I think he's the star that. of this. Uh, <laughs> Interstellar. There's been a famine. And, um, uh, in fact, they're in the, uh, about a second dust bowl. Okay. So they have to find a new world. All right. So I'm, I don't know how we look at that. Yeah, somehow famine. I missed Interstellar, but I get it. Yeah, it's not a great film. Um, <coughs> Godzilla. I was trying to renew, because Godzilla was a failure for me. Yeah. The new one. Yes, it's terrible. Yeah. But don't these eco-terrorists enjoin the beasts to help them the, uh, <coughs> to, uh, to forestall human extinction? I mean, don't they bring in the beasts? I can't Yeah, I don't know. I can't. <laughs> it's all a bunch of nonsense. Uh, in closing... Yeah. No, I want to add one more thing. Yeah, yeah, please, go ahead. Right? We do have some films that are the other side, uh, in a in a stark way. In First Reformed, okay, um, he, Ethan Hawke, Ethan Hawke, is going to blow up this guy, who has been responsible for some bad stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh, right. God, so he starts to take on a little. <laughs> Eco terrorists. <laughs> right. uh, but the best one, and not the best film. Yeah. But the best one for how we're going to deal with it is Matt Damon and downsizing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. We're going to wreck everything. Let's just downsize. Right. <laughs> that movie's terrible, by the way. <laughs> it is. Uh, I highly suggest skipping it. All right. So you were going to close off. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, you can go down a rabbit hole with this. So, like when you mentioned Godzilla and then. You know that then you get the environmental things that happen to like you know the giant toad. <clears throat> you know you get the giant creatures that that they've been you know transmogrified oh, yes, right, by, right, right, by yeah. some kind of environmental spill or something. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. That's so like, yeah, you can just keep shooting down these little avenues of craziness. Well, I guess it goes back to your original question uh, about whether this is. These are the causes of the apocalypse, or are they just background? And I think right. we found both, didn't we? I, yeah, I think that's a really interesting thing to start thinking about. You know, I've always conceived of, of post-apocalyptic films as being the world as it is after a nuclear war. After nuclear, right. right. But we don't have to necessarily define the apocalypse as nuclear war. Now it seems like, and you can start to see it in all the imaginings of these films, that maybe the apocalypse is our own environmental undoing. Okay. So I don't Good know. Good topic. <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat>